In the personal story segment tonight, do you believe in God? Increasingly, fewer Americans do. According to a Pew poll, 12% of us do not have a belief in a higher power, up from 8% in 1987, and that group includes agnostics. In Europe, the rise of atheism and agnosticism is stunning. According to a Zuckerman study in Sweden, as many as 85% of the population are non-believers. Japan, 65%. France, 54%. And in Britain, 44% do not believe in God in Great Britain. This now is a man who understands that position. Richard Dawkins, the author of the mega-selling best book, The God Delusion. I think it takes more faith to be like you, an atheist, than like me, a believer, and it's because of nature. You know, I just don't think we could have lucked out to have the tides come in, the tides go out, the sun go up, the sun go down. Don't think it could have happened. We have a very full understanding of why the tides go in, the tides go out, about, of why the continents drift about, of why life is there. Science is ever more piling on the evidence, piling on the understanding. But it had to get there. I understand that you, you know, the uh, physiology of it, if, if you will, but it had, to, it had to come from somewhere. And that is the leap of faith that you guys made, that it just happened. Well, a leap of faith, you don't actually need a leap of faith. You, you're the one who needs a leap of faith because you are actually, you, the onus is on you to say why you, do, you believe in something. The idea that, you know, atheists don't have anything to prove, that, that sort of came about uh, when Anthony Flew wrote his very influential paper, I think it was back in the 60s, saying that, you know, there's this presumption of atheism and atheism should just kind of be the, the default standard position. And a lot of philosophers have kind of pushed back over that over the years and just said, you know, that's that's really a, a kind of a bunk claim. If you are subtracting God from the equation, you are left with a affirmative claim that you're now making. That every single component of reality is naturalistically explainable. Yeah. And that is just as much uh, requiring support as its alternative. There's an infinite number of gods you could believe in. I take it you don't believe in Zeus or Apollo or Thor. You believe in presumably the Jesus. Christian god, Jesus. So Jesus yeah. was a real guy. I could see him. Yeah. You know, and I know what he did. And so I'm not positive that Jesus is God, but I'm throwing in with Jesus rather than throwing in with you guys because you guys can't tell me how it all got here. You guys don't know. We're working on it. Physicists are oh, working. When you get it, then maybe I'll listen. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, if you look at the history of science over the, over the centuries, yeah. the amount that's, that's gained in knowledge each century is stupendous. In the beginning of the 21st century, we don't know everything. We have to be humble. We have to, in humility, say that there's a lot that we still don't know. And, you know, being humble is a Christian virtue. Well, so, there you go. of course it is. All right, when you guys figure it out, then you come back here and tell me, because until that time, I'm sticking with Judeo-Christian philosophy and my religion of Roman Catholicism because it helps me as a person. Ah, that's different. If it, you know, if helps, it helps you, that's absolutely. great. And but I'm that doesn't it, mean it's true. And, that, well, it's true for me. You see, I, I believe You it. mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? Have yeah, something to be absolutely, true for you? Because I can't Some prove, things either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. I can't prove to you that Jesus is God. So that truth is mine and mine alone. But you can't prove to me that Jesus is not. I agree with Dawkins on this, right? Yeah, Dawkins yeah. is right. Either God exists or he doesn't. It's not a ma matter of my truth versus your truth. That's the mentality that causes people to say, don't talk about religion, don't talk about politics. Mm -hmm. Just kind of keep it, you know, we each have our own opinions. But doesn't that assume that there isn't truth? Yeah. Yeah, it's assuming that there is no actual God out there in reality that is the foundation of all reality. It's just assuming that this is some sort of psychological construct, something that helps me, some sort of guiding principle. And in that case, like, who am I to say? principle is superior to your guiding principle. That's like saying my my preference for ramen is better than your preference for, uh, you know, pizza. Trash. Or pizza. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Pizza, yeah. So, uh, you know, of course that would be offensive to say my opinion's better than yours, but that's not what people have ever claimed that God is. We're, we're claiming a real thing, just like a, a scientific theory says, this is the reason for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're a scientific realist, you're saying this really is the cause for this thing. We're saying God is the foundation of all reality. And it's not just true for me. It's not just true for religious people. It's the truth that applies every, to everywhere and everything. And O'Reilly, he makes an, an interesting, I think, mistake there here is he's in, confusing epistemology with ontology, where he says, you know, I can't prove it to you. And Dawkins like, well, you can't prove these things. So what? 
the fact that you can't prove it, the fact that you know you can't know it uh, with absolute certainty, doesn't mean that uh, there's not a, a real ontological, a real reality out there to be discovered. We also differ in the sense that you feel that religion has been a bane, B-A-N-E, to civilization, and I feel atheism has. And I will point to the worst mass murderers in uh, modern times, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, and Pol Pot, all confirmed atheists, all people who wanted to wipe out religion. Now, I know you can point to the Crusades and you can point to Al-Qaeda right now. I mean, it's there and there's no question. But I say I'm thrown in with the founding fathers of the United States, which saw religion, spirituality as a moderating influence, as a good thing if people embrace the true tenets. Go ahead. The founding fathers of the United States were secularists above all. So some of them were religious, some of them were not, but they were above all secularists who believed in keeping church and state They separate. had to because of the oppression in Europe. That was what they were, that, right. precisely. But I mean, that was almost what they were all of them, they all said a prayer before their deliberations. In their letters, and I have almost all their letters, they all reference the deity. Our Declaration of Independence references heavily. But they saw it as a moderating influence because the federal government at that point couldn't control the country. And they it, said, you know, if yeah. people follow Jesus, then the country's going to be better. It may well be a moderating influence. As for Hitler and Stalin and so on, I mean, of, of course, Hitler, by the way, was a Roman Catholic. No, and he never was, was. He was raised in that home, yeah, well, but he, he rejected we, it early okay, on. We can, we can dispute that. Um, Stalin was an atheist, no question. Uh, but Stalin did the bad things he did, not because he was an atheist. I mean, Hitler and Stalin oh. both had moustaches, but we don't say it was their moustaches <laughs> that made them evil. I don't think they had any moral foundation, any of those guys. There's more deaths in the 20th century than every other century combined. That's extremely dramatic, but whenever that gets brought out, there's always this counterpoint that's made. It, these things were not done in the name of atheism, which is a fair point, kind of. And what I mean is, what would it look like for something to be done in the name of atheism, number one? And number two, that's really not the standard. The standard is, does do the implications of that belief system lead to this result. Is it a bad tree that yields bad fruit? Whether or not it's stated as being done in the name of atheism is totally irrelevant to the actual fruit that it yields. And so if believing that there isn't any God, if believing that we're nothing more than matter, if believing that there is no soul, that love is an illusion, that reason is an illusion, that when we die, we go back into the ground, if believing those things leads to oppression at a broad, systemic, horrific level, then I don't really care if it's being done in the name of atheism officially. The point is it's being done by people who have that worldview. If you enjoyed this conversation, you would almost certainly enjoy the Wisdom Society. You can find out more about the Wisdom Society here. We have resident experts like Stephen Meyer, Hugh Ross, Paul Copan, and upcoming in November, Justin Briley will be joining us as we discuss his book, The Surprising Rebirth of Belief in God. Click here, find out more, and I hope to see you guys there.